Being a badass on the small screen doesn't actually always guarantee that you're going to go out like one, as you know what is more popular than your character will ever be? Ratings, my friend, and as soon as executives see a dip in them or smell blood in the water, then you're no more than a plot device. I'm speaking of course about the ever-tired trope of killing off characters for ratings, which happens so often that you might question whether it's even worth ever trying to love again. However, you have to appreciate when characters go out with a blaze of glory, taking down the big bad or even just saving those that they care about from harm. But the entries on this list? Uh, well, they ain't those. These are stories instead of idiocy, comedic silliness or downright writer's spite, which all resulted in cool characters biting the big one in less than grand fashion. So with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 dumbest ways supposedly badass TV characters have died. Number 10. Dr. Manhattan is killed the same way that he was created. Watchmen. Damon Lindelof's Watchmen series was a surprisingly solid spot of television for pretty much its entire run at the end of 2019. That is, all bar a rather significant and rather underwhelming death in the season finale. As we all know, Dr. Manhattan is, in effect, a god who can do pretty much anything he wants. And to top off his massive array of powers is the lovely little caveat that he is potentially immortal, seeing as every attempt to kill him resulted in failure and the fact that he can reassemble himself even from an atomic level. However, one thing that he can't seem to survive is being reduced to the cellular level and then being absorbed, which, while being totally out of the box, seems rather baffling when you consider this guy's power level and moveset. A character this OP has to have something truly god-tier to take him down, right? But instead, he's destroyed in very much the same way that he was created in the first place, despite surviving similar attempts to kill him in the past. Go figure. Number 9. Lexa was hit by a stray bullet. The 100. For a showrunner to have to apologize for how a major character was killed off is a pretty big deal, and that's exactly what happened in the aftermath of the death of Lexa on the CW's The 100. Without going into the more political arguments behind Lexa's unfortunate on-screen demise, killing her off was not right especially the way that the show chose to go about it, in that she gets hit by a stray bullet, which is probably the lamest way for any character to shuffle off their mortal coil. She was a great character with a cool backstory, and there was a relationship angle between her and Clark that seemed cheap and insulting to deny her a decent send-off. As the heads behind the show stated, that very important representation was taken away by one stray bullet. And as you can imagine, fans were understandably pissed off. Number 8. David Palmer is sniped during the opening credits, 24. Of all of the supporting players from the first four seasons of 24, none of them were as cool as President slash Senator David Palmer. The man was so damn likeable, fans of the show even backed him as their candidate for the presidency in real life, although only chosen from a list of fictional presidents. But still, that's pretty cool. Palmer cut a dignified figure throughout his time on the show despite having to deal with his fair share of problems, which is what made it all the more shocking when he was killed off in the opening credits of the fifth season of 24. Killing off a character in the opening to your season is always a bold decision. Whilst Palmer's death was critical in driving forward the plot of the new season, it actually didn't really offer that much more than shock value, and that's a real shame. Number 7. Dean Endures Death by Taco Supernatural Now don't get us wrong, the Winchester brothers have survived more than their fair share of brushes with death. In fact, two characters who have had this many close calls as this pair under normal circumstances would be distinctly OP even for television characters. But for all of the brothers' misadventures, no episode in the history of Supernatural takes the cake for cramming as many deaths in as Mystery Spot. Sam is stuck in a time loop and forced to watch older brother Dean die over and over again, kind of like the worst possible version of Groundhog Day. The premise is pretty horrific, but the drama of this predicament runs its course quite quickly as Dean's deaths grow more and more ridiculous. Choking on a sausage, being mauled to death by a golden retriever, slipping in the shower, and these are just a few of the sillier fates that Dean is forced through, but the best, or worst depending on how you look at it, is death as a result of ingesting a poisoned tackle. Whilst Dean's love for the Tex-Mex staple is well known amongst fans of the show, the fact that it ends up killing him, however briefly, is utterly ridiculous. Given how horrifying the situation would be, it's a fairly dumb death for such a badass character, even if it is played for 
laughs. Number six, Madison via self-immolation. Fear the Walking Dead Fear the Walking Dead took a very big risk in killing off one of its leading characters in the first half of its fourth season, and as you can imagine, while it was dramatic, it did mean that the fan base was utterly divided, especially when it came down to how she was killed off. Having survived just about everything the world could throw at her and managing to safeguard both her children and the small group of survivors she led, Madison finally met her end burning herself and a ton of walkers to death. So what's the issue here? Well, for a start, that fence looks pretty climbable, especially seeing as Glenn got out there in time. And yes, it was befitting in terms of tone, but in terms of delivery, well, it was kind of a bit of a missed opportunity and arguably a very dumb way to kill off such a badass character. Number five, Jax's suicide by truck. Sons of Anarchy Jax choosing to go out on his own terms in the final episode of Sons of Anarchy is definitely a badass move. In fact, I think that in order to have starred on this show, you needed to at least have had a massive permanent marker style X next to badass on your character ability sheet. And the ending's message was sound as well, because he was willing to die for the sins of both his immediate family and for his club. Yet, in spite of the Christ-like parallels and the idea of this moment, it's still so stupid that it's almost laughable. He drives into a truck. A badly CGI truck which begs the question of why any of this scene was CG in the first place. If the show had just cut to the crows before the final shot of him and the truck colliding, then the scene would have been much better. Because less is more, people. Learn to restrain yourself sometimes. But no, we got a shoddy effect and an audience unable to truly connect with the scene, and some even laughing at what they were seeing. Number 4. Cersei and Jaime Lannister are crushed. Game of Thrones the Lannister twins were two of the most destructive characters to grace the screens of viewers in Game of Thrones, and while you absolutely hated them to pieces, you absolutely loved to do so throughout the series. They managed to literally backstab their way into becoming the two top dogs in the land, all the while leaving a trail of bodies in their wake. And Cersei was the show's greatest villain, an antagonist so deliciously diabolical that you couldn't help but be captivated by her schemes. And Jaime? Well, he was a man torn between the love of his family family and the love of his life, which now I say it out aloud were actually the same thing. Therefore it was rather fitting that they go out embracing each other, but the manner in which they do so? Nah mate, nah, nah not for me mate, nah. This was not satisfying in the slightest. Even when Tyrion finds their bodies there's no emotional payoff and it feels like such a wasted moment. They could have been read the riot act, been made to experience some sort of revelation before being executed, or they could have even chosen to kill themselves before capture, lending a sense of tragedy to their twisted love angle. But no, crush to death by some bricks, good. Number 3. Carl Grimes is bitten by walkers and then commits suicide. The Walking Dead Sometimes a show can break away from its source material and make changes for the better. Whilst this is definitely what the producers behind The Walking Dead had in mind, when the decision was made for Carl to depart, it didn't exactly work out. Carl was an integral part of the show. As a main cast member since the first series, he grew up in front of viewers, surviving a post-apocalyptic nightmare and still managing to retain much of his sweetness and humanity. Fans of the comics knew that Carl's path was to eventually grow into a leader, kind of like his father Rick, but in the show, well, they had other ideas. Whilst fans were undeniably angry that the show chose to kill off Carl when he was still alive in the comics, this isn't actually what makes Carl's exit so dumb. What makes it dumb is that the show tried to convince the audience that Carl had to die in order to set Rick down a path of peace when he didn't actually need to. Rick eventually came to accept his son's views in the comics without Carl dying at all, and after this moment everyone chose to step away and there was no step towards the future being even a small portion brighter. It felt forced as well, because we'd witnessed Carl dispatch more walkers than this before in the past, and when he finally went down to just a mere few, it just desperately seemed like a ratings chase, unfortunately from which the show never recovered from. Number 2. John Locke is Strangled Lost Although a deeply tragic and to a certain extent pathetic character, Locke found his calling on the island and became a full-blown badass. But his mission to return some of the key members of the Oceanic Flight 815 back to the island would be his undoing. At his lowest moment, Locke is seemingly saved from suicide by Ben, only for the former leader of the others to murder Locke after learning the key to returning to the island. 
as death scenes on Lost go, it's pretty shocking, but as much as there might be merit behind Locke dying this way, it still feels like a dumb ending for such a popular character. Arguably, Locke doesn't even have any real purpose on the show in the end. I mean, he's just a tragic figure that finds himself constantly being taken advantage of. Whilst his image might be assumed by the man in black for the rest of the season, and that to prove crucial to the show's ending, Locke's story actually ends at Ben's hands in that hotel room after being duped yet again. Locke may have chosen to sacrifice himself to return the surviving passengers to the island if given the choice, but the show never gave him this option. Even if Locke always had to die, he should have been able to go out on his own terms and had a more meaningful death, and therefore a more meaningful conclusion to his own story. And number one, Omar is shot by a child, The Wire. Some characters create an aura that is so encompassing that it seems that they will never be killed, which makes for such great moments of TV when something utterly random is actually their undoing. Omar was the survivor in The Wire's cutthroat world of petty crime, a man with morals but unafraid to use violence to get what he needed. But as his story was reaching what many thought would be an explosive conclusion, he suddenly gunned down out of nowhere. Watching a petty teenage drug dealer take Omar down while his back is turned was incredibly frustrating. And even though there are lines that can be drawn between Omar's cycle of violence and the teen who shot him, the actual death doesn't amount to much at all. Now, some might argue that this was the only fitting way that he could have exited the show, but Omar dies almost completely unmourned and unacknowledged. And while this show definitely teaches you that things will not work out for the best sometimes, this could have been the one moment that stood out as the exception to the rule. It's not dumb because it lacks any meaning, it's dumb just because that there was an even more powerful moment just out of reach. I mean, still though, it seems like Petty complaining because The Wire is easily one of the best shows ever made, so clearly it did something right. And you know what, if you disagree with this, that is absolutely fine. Sound off down below.